Welcome to a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild Part 20. Assembling some of the parts and removing the piston. Some of the fits between parts on this engine are not brilliant. I machined the crank web so I know that the fit between the crank pin and the crank web is going to be OK. I didn't make the crank pin and this has a spacer washer which is quite a good idea to centralise the big end. The crank pin is held to the crank web just by this nut. It took me quite a long time to get this nut to engage with the thread on the crank pin and finally it did, so now I can tighten it up with a spanner. And again I'm using an ordinary spanner, not my Barco spanner because it's not in a good place for a Barco. There isn't much clearance for the jaws of the spanner around where the nut lives. But this other small spanner set's quite good, but in the end I managed to give the nut a final tighten using the barco. It's of paramount importance that this nut is tight. If the crank pin works loose and falls off when the engine's running, the engine could be damaged. And now for the very first time, live as you see it on the camera, I didn't try it first and then video it, this is just as I'm doing the job as with everything else. I'm attempting to turn over the engine manually but there's a problem. As I rotate the flywheel and the beam lifts, the piston hits the top cylinder cover on the inside. Also, if you look carefully, the watts parallel motion is a little bit on the tight side. The entablature is moving at both sides as I move the piston up and down. I will have to rectify this, but not just yet. I'm concentrating on the position of the piston in the cylinder. On the end of the piston rod is a fitting that connects to the watts parallel motion and I'm able to screw the piston rod in and out of this fitting until I get it in the right position so the engine goes all the way over. The problem is I'm not very happy with the amount of the piston rod that's coming out of the fitting. The end of the piston rod is threaded 2BA. This screws into the fitting and to be perfectly honest I think it's just about to unscrew from the fitting. Anyway I'll tighten the nut and see whether I can get it to work. Yes, and now the piston goes up and down, but there's far too much of the piston rod sticking out of the top fitting. It looks like there's only a couple of threads actually engaging with the fitting. And mechanically speaking, this is not good. When I turn over the flywheel like this, it seems to be running quite free. But I can feel one or two tight spots. Most of these tight spots are nothing to do with the flywheel or the connecting rod, they feel to be more to do with the watts parallel motion. I'll leave it for now, but it does need some attention. Quite apart from the rounded lock nut, and no, I haven't done that, I do not like how much thread sticks out. And after one and a half more turns of the piston rod, it fell out of the fitting. So, what's the plan? Well, in my book, there's only one plan, make a new piston and piston rod, and throw the other one in the bin. In this clip I'm removing the nuts from around the cylinder cover. I'll loosen them with a small spanner and here I'm removing them using this very small and very useful small socket. And in no time at all the nuts are all removed. To break the seal as usual I'm using a Stanley knife blade. After which the cylinder cover comes away quite cleanly. I'm going to discard this gasket because as you can see it's rubbish. I'll make a new one. Time to pull the piston and rod out of the cylinder. The piston fit is OK, it isn't meant to be a tight fit because it has a silicone o-ring on it. When I measured the piston size with a micrometer, it's about two thou under size. The silicone piston ring does the rest. It's a good seal. In the next episode, I'll be making a complete new piston. This one is unserviceable. To show that the engine is fairly free, I turn it over by hand like this, it's a bit like a sewing machine treadle. But apart from some tight spots it runs OK. This shot is a bit out of sequence, but as you can see the position of the lock nut didn't leave many threads to engage the fitting, where the piston rod meets the watts parallel motion. The end of the piston rod is reduced to fit into a small hole in the piston, and only the end of the reduced part of the rod is threaded to take this lock nut. I'm going to dismantle it so you can see how it's put together. To do this I'm clamping the rod in a tailstock chuck. 
Then I can use my trusty Barco spanner to remove the lock nut and here's the piston sat on the bench. When I make a new piston and rod assembly for the engine I'm not going to make it this way at all. I'll show that in the next episode, but for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.